so many people got questions about the 401k. Some people say 401k is good. Some people say 401k is bad. The truth of it is 401k is better than doing nothing. And then all the alternatives that you see out here on social media that say you should do besides the 401k, let's be truthful. Most of y'all don't have the discipline enough to do them anyway. So you might as well start somewhere and do something. Later in the video, we're gonna talk about other investments that you can do inside the 401k that will give you great returns so you can have a better retirement. When I say y'all not disciplined, don't get your chonies all in a bunch. What I'm saying is, is the truth is this, 401ks, they take the money out before you can put your grimy hands on there and mess up the plan. So that is one of the good alternatives because if everybody was good with money after they got their paycheck, then we wouldn't be in this financial situation that we're in. Like I said, investing is the key to bettering your life. And 401k is a good alternative to doing nothing. But we're gonna send to Alex and uh, he's gonna give you more insight on the 401k. As to what Kirby was saying, a 401k is a great investment strategy. For most people, it doesn't require discipline at all. And a 401k has the great benefit that a company match is available to you. So you can take advantage of it, whatever that percentage amount is, match the company rate. And then from there, if you are able to invest more, go ahead and do so because the company match is not the maximum amount that you can contribute. Another key to the 401k investing strategy is know what you're investing in. Most employers will put you in a default portfolio of investments. You need to know what you're investing in because let's be honest, if an employer wanted you to be rich, you wouldn't be working for them anymore. So they are gonna put you in stocks that are gonna charge you fees and you need to be in control of your own investments and know what you are actually putting your money into. Alex, you made a good point about the employer. Just like an employer driving up into the parking lot and seeing that the employees have new cars and buying houses and things like that. The only thing you're telling the employer is you're beholden to them for their survival. And they like it because they know that they can push you to the max before you have to leave because you have many debt obligations. Just like a 401k, they're not gonna put you in the best possible position to succeed. Like Alex was talking about, they put you in you know, target retirement funds and different things like that that charge an enormous amount of fees that's taken away from the capital that can actually grow an investment. Uh, before we get into what actually we recommend putting into your 401k, the thing that you need to understand is you want to invest in the best performing mutual funds that charges the lowest fees. Management fees is a good point. And all 401ks are different. They all have different investments that you can invest in. But what you need to be looking for are the management fees. You should be paying 0.1% or less in management fees. Now, the way you find that is find mutual funds that are indexed to the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. And these are funds that are not actively managed, which your employer does not put you in. So you need to look for those stocks on your own and invest in those. Every 401k from different employers are different. Spread across different brokerages, they all offer different investments, different funds that you can invest in. So don't expect to be able to invest in specific funds, that's why we're not gonna give specific examples of what to invest in. But what you need to be looking for are mutual funds that are relative or attached to the S&P 500. It'll explain when you're looking at those funds, if it is a S&P 500 fund, if it's a NASDAQ fund. These are funds that are not actively managed. These are funds that have low management fees, and these are gonna be the best for your portfolio to grow and show you those rates of return. Alex, you made a good point about the management fees and expenses that employees are paying when they go into these random funds in their 401k. Like you said, the, there's a very limited option and you should look for funds that closely mimic the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ. The reason why we try to steer people to that direction is because if you look at it, the S&P 500 for the past 100 years has averaged about a 10%, 11% return per year. And then for the NASDAQ, let's be honest people, we're moving more to a technology-based world. And then if you believe in technology will be the future of this world then invest in the NASDAQ, which is only science and technology companies, then that is the way to go. And then they're averaging uh, over, cause they're not as long as the SP 500, you know, they're averaging about 12 to 15% per year. Now, with that being said, the reason why we want you to go into these investments because the expense is low, the return is high, and then all these other funds is actively managed, they are not performing at this clip. To Kirby's point, the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are also stable mutual funds or stable index ETFs. So a lot of people, they look for that stability. I hear often people don't want to be looking at the stock market all the time, looking at charts. They don't want to be on top of it. 
treat it as if you would treat a savings account. Just put your money into it, let it grow over time. Don't pay any mind to it. And don't get spooked by the drops and the ups and all of that. Just keep putting money into it and over time you will see those returns. Yeah, and to the last point, the reason why Alex began the conversation about you need to invest more is because, let's be real, the more money that you have investing now will give you more money in retirement. And then with the price of inflation, the price of goods, the price of groceries, the price of rent, the price of home ownership going up, you're going to need as much money as possible. And this is the easy, no thought process of getting the wealth to have you, to give you a comfortable retirement. So with that, the more that you can put in now, the more that you can put in later, the more you will have in the future, especially when you're averaging between nine to 12% returns year over year. We're talking, you can get upwards to the millions depending on the age you start this venture. With all that being said, guys, if you have any questions, let us know in the comment section, hit the subscribe button, share this video, like it, and we'll see you guys in the next one.